Cool. So after the last video on LUTs, um, I've been getting a lot of questions and comments and people messaging me. So I just wanted to go over um, kind of the more detailed aspects of using a LUT. Um, probably the most important one is uh, texture compression. Um, you can see, I think these are all default uh, settings. Yeah, global. Yeah, so you can see, I hope you can see this um, on the stream, um, but on my machine, you can see there's some banding um, and you can really exaggerate it if you say no filtering. Um, and this is kind of weird quirk. I don't, I don't really know what these do, but they don't do it. We want them to. So probably don't use those um, unless you're going for that. I don't know. Could be some kind of weird glitchy effect. Um, so I usually just leave it on low and then um, these these compression settings seem to change pretty often um, like between the beta and and this version um, but generally just make it high um, and use your eyeballs and um, test on device. Uh, so beyond that like Sure, you can make like a, a cool filter that just uses LUTs, um, but Air Studio has all these cool features for face tracking. So by default, um, you can see the face doesn't show up. And that's because there's a giant plane blocking the entire camera's view. So you can see the face. It's there, but you can't see it. So. To fix that, um, go to um, that canvas texture and go to advanced render options. Um, this used to be like a feature of layers, so uh, if you're confused about that, then um, just look here. So it's in the texture, advanced render options, and then you don't want it to write to depth. So it, it always writes on the the furthest back layer. So you can see all the 3D stuff. Um, so that's great, uh, but the there's no post-processing in Spark yet. I hope it's there one day. So this is kind of a pain, but you have to make, you have to apply the LUT to every single texture that you use. So right now, um, let me change this to standard. Oh yeah, I deleted the lights. Maybe that wasn't so smart. Um, that didn't seem to do anything. There we go. Uh, so you can tell like this is just black and white. There's no uh, LUT being applied, um, but it's the same process. So you, you just extract that texture into the node graph, um, or extract that material into the node graph. And then, how do you do this? I don't remember. Oh yeah, uh, go to face tracker and then extract the face texture from there. Um, and that's gonna be the texture that you use for this one. Um, so if you just connect it, you can see it's my face. It looks a little weird just because there's a, I put lighting on it. So let's take that off. And you can see it's just my face, like without the LUT applied. Um, so I'm just going to copy this LUT. Put that there, put that there. And that's it. Um, so that's good and all, but there's something to note. You can't use, um, like if you want to use any kind of um, fancy features like uh, face deformation or retouching, they, they don't expose those textures. Um, like we were able to get the face, just like the plain face, but they don't expose the, the other textures in the same way. So like we, we just can't 
grab it after it's been processed. So ideally there would be in the future a post processing processing step where you just take the whole frame like after all the 3D stuff's been done um, and then you would be able to get that as an ext extracted texture and just put a LED on it or, or whatever color adjustments you want. So um, that's pretty much it for the actual LUTs. Um, but there's a cool trick I just discovered. It's basically the same as using a LUT, except it doesn't use an image. It uses um, a gradient. So I'm just going to clear all this stuff out. Let's start fresh. Um, so I made a whole bunch of color adjustment patches on this repository, Spark Color Adjust. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff in there exposure brightness, hue saturation, vibrance. Um, but the one I'm talking about is gradient map. So um, if you've never made a gradient before, I'll show you how. So I'm just going to grab that. So you start with a gradient. Um, and I think it has to be horizontal. I'm not totally sure. I don't remember, but, um, and then you go to gradient step. So for starting color, I'm just gonna kind of pick random colors here. Uh, those are both kind of red. Okay, we'll go red to green. And I'm just gonna keep it simple for the sake of time. So you pass the gradient through and then the output of the previous step is the starting point for the, the next one. For some reason it, it doesn't show the correct color there, but you can trust it. Um, so we've got our gradient. And then, I mean, this basically works, oh uh, yeah. Is that actually gradient? I think I had to rename that. I think it's it's actually the output is the thing that you want. Oh, so if you want to see just what the gradient looks like, you can do that um, just to get an idea of like if you're doing same things with your, with your gradient. Um, so the way it works is the the blacks are going to start on the left side and then the whites are are going to be on the right side and then you know it's a, a scale. Um, so based on luminosity, it's going to pick a color and use that on the, the texture. So it basically works the same way as the light. You just pass in the texture and then uh, the gradient. So this one's kind of funky. Let me delete this face tracker. Yeah, so you can get some like pretty cool but simple effects. Like there's a lot of... Uh, People are real interested in this like kind of neon look. I, I just did that on accident, but um, yeah, it's pretty cool looking. So hope you enjoy it. Um, that's it for today. Um, hit me up in the comments, press on the subscribe button, and um, I'll see you next time.